Porsche engine. It's back, baby! Yes! Pepper's Time back. to get back to work! Yes! This is the engine and the pistons. I'm only missing the connecting rods, but this 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 makes me happy. Let's take a look. Okay. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. I'm Yogi with Yogi's Garage. We're back with an awesome episode today. I've got a lot of things going on. Did you notice that engine in the box? We're, we're gonna get a closer look at that beautiful thing, yeah because I've been waiting for months for that. And the connecting rods finally came, and the pistons are here. So I'm ready to start putting the Porsche 911 engine back together, finally. Uh, but also, I gotta get this wagon out of here, man. The wagon is almost finished. I got a few more things to do. I got a vacuum leak. I think I need to replace the gasket on the throttle body, as well as whatever else it needs. I think it was leaking some coolant. Gotta replace the radiator cap, things like that. But a lot of work going on here at Yogi's Garage. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the engine so you can take a look at it, and then we'll go right over to the wagon and get that one out of here so we can start working on the Porsche. Oh, one other thing I need to do is blueprint the engine, right? So it's not just some run-of-the-mill engine. We're talking about a four-liter high-performance flat-six engine. So I need to make sure that all of my tolerances are within spec. So that means I gotta blueprint it, I gotta measure and mic the crankshaft. I gotta mic the journals on the carrier as well. So I got a lot of little math nerdy things I gotta do, but you gotta do what you gotta do in order to feel confident about putting an engine together. I'm kind of learning that as we go along. Cause as you know, I haven't done a whole lot of these. I've rebuilt one engine so far in my Yogi's Garage career, which by the way, I'm on my two year anniversary. So hopefully I might get some kind of surprise during this video and we'll get to celebrate two years of Yogi's Garage. But anyway, this engine's the second one I've rebuilt. The, the Gunther engine was just a swap, just a replacement. So I didn't really break it apart and have to do any of that. But now I'm back to blueprinting, so joy. But anyway, let's get started. Yes, this is my assembly book that I got from uh, LN Engineering on how to rebuild the engine and the DVD pack, which is right here. So awesome. No guesswork for me. Thanks, Jake. All right, let me put this here. And these are pistons from jepistons.com. And let me see how to open this. Okay, it looks like it opens from the front. Let me take that off. Ooh, a sticker. Gotta have a sticker. Here we go. It's a box. Uh, more stickers. Oh, oh, even the piston rings. Let's just take one of these bad boys out. Oh, Shiny. look at that beautiful thing. Oh, uh, yeah. More hearse purrs. <laughs> hearse purrs. Hearse purrs. All right, now let's, let's take a look at the engine, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It has been... Let's see, I got it in March. I sent it in late March, right? April? Yeah. So four, eight, 10 weeks, exactly 10 weeks. And I'm still waiting for the, the rods, so that'll give me time to finish Gunther. All right. Uh, my cylinder head, gasket. These are custom 4.0 cylinder head gaskets. Those are expensive, very expensive for what they are. Okay, here we go. We all remember what it looked like before, and if you don't, I'm gonna put a picture up of what these cylinders look like after I screwed them up when I hot tanked them. So, let's see what it looks like now. 
Ooh, look how clean it is. Wow. Oh. oh my God, it's like it's brand new. Oh yeah. Look at that. These are Nikki's, baby. Hold still for a second. There. <laughs> I love you so much, man. I love you so much. Oh. Let's fix it. this mangled hey. piece of metal you have here? Well, <laughs> this mangled piece of metal is the dipstick that goes into the transmission on the Mercedes. And uh, yeah, it was all jammed in there because the actual dipstick tube has a pinch in it. And what I'm thinking is this little bent part right here is what jammed it up. So each time the mechanics tried to push it in, it just kept kinking it and kinking it. And uh, so when... My friend Marshall from Garage Time TV came over yesterday. Um, he helped me, was it yesterday? I, mean, I don't remember. Um, he helped me pull it out, but then I had to fix it because I need to use this, right? Because it has a couple of markings on it that tell me where the transmission fluid should be at a certain temperature. So I need this, but unfortunately I'm probably gonna have to cut that tip off and then move these marks up accordingly to compensate for the loss. But before I do that, I gotta straighten this thing out. So I'm gonna do that first. <laughs> All right, dumb question. All right. Um, how much is a new one? Uh, it doesn't matter if it's new or not because this tip comes with all of them. Right. So I can just straighten this out, use it. Cause you know, if I fix the leak, I won't have to worry about the transmission fluid for a while, but you know, I don't know if it's worth getting a new dipstick, but I don't know. And I'd have to buy the whole tube, and the tube is not cheap. Okay. I thought if maybe you could just get the stick, if it were, you know, I don't know, 10 bucks, maybe that saves you. Yeah, you know, I think if this was, if this was a Ford, maybe it'd be $10, but this is a Mercedes. So you'll have to double that. I'm starting to see a trend here, Yogi. You know, Audis and Mercedes and Porsches. Like, why can't you just fix a Toyota? Who's going to watch a video on a Toyota? Somebody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> watch a video on a Toyota. You're funny. Well, hang on. Isn't that the bottom of it? This is what goes in. Right. So why would you ha have to remeasure? Are you suggesting that I go this way with it? Well, which which is the part this that... This is the top. Right. This goes in. Correct. This is too big. So even if you cut it off, it's not going to go deeper down because it stops it at the top. What I'm saying is, you know, if you stick it in... And if the measurement's lower than you thought it should be, just... But why would it be when it's going to stop when it hits the other end of that anyway? No matter what, you can't make it go deeper. Are we talking about the dipstick? Right now we are talking about <laughs> okay, one of the dipsticks in this room. <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is my video. It's leaning to the right a little bit, but I think that's, that's pretty normal. <laughs> uh -huh, I'm out. All right. <laughs> All right. What, what catastrophic damage are you planning now? Well, I can't get the dipstick in that hole until I take that bent part off. Yep. So I'm not gonna worry about grinding it off or bending it straight. I'll just cut it off. Be still. Wow, I'm trying to get it. I can't right focus. There. there we go. There. Boom. Oh. Yeah, that should be nice and straight. Don't get too excited, man. Well, it's getting stuck. 
But I'm gonna put some tape on the end there so that little plastic thing doesn't go taking a trip. You're gonna pull that out. It's gonna be just as mangled up as it was before. <laughs> it wants to mangle really bad, it really does. <laughs> you are just re-kinking it. The moment of truth. a vacuum leak and I'm thinking that this module here is not properly powered because the sensors are all rotted off because of the biodegradable wiring harness. So what I'm doing is I'm using banana plugs, which I did here on the uh, camshaft position sensor, which is right here. It's a variable sensor. I had to use them here as well because they were completely broken off. So that's what I'm doing. I think I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter look better but that's the actual length of it that's what I'm going to be doing so what I want to do is I want to tin this wire before I put it on there like any good soldering technique should since I cook I think of that as coating everything in flour before dipping it in your egg right fretting <laughs> To make sure it sticks. Yeah, it looks like I got this thing apart again. Uh, I'm still running with a rough idle. So uh, with some advice from the guys on the forum, they told me to make sure that I replaced the gasket on the throttle body, but I did not do that. So that's a low hanging fruit. So I got that ordered. That's gonna take a couple of days, man, because I gotta get this car out of here and get started on the Porsche rebuild. That's what we're talking about. But I wanted to give you an update on it. So while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the vacuum diagram here and make sure everything is routed properly. It's got a rough idle. The only thing that makes sense is there's a vacuum leak somewhere or the throttle assembly is faulty. And that's not a problem. I got two other throttle assemblies that I can choose from. And I'm pretty sure the one that was originally on Gunther will work. So I've got a path forward. What in the world are you doing? It's called miking. I'm using a micrometer to measure the diameter of the journals uh, for the connecting rods. And then I need to measure the diameter for the journals for the main bearing. Yeah. And what I have to do is I take these measurements and then I measure the same thing on the inside, for example, on the connecting rod. I take those two numbers, figure out what the difference is, and that's your clearance. And there's a certain tolerance level that each one of these is allowed to have. If it varies beyond that, you could have issues with your engine. And uh, it took you a little brain power to figure out how to I'm read what is. I am a mechanical genius now. This makes me smart. <laughs> I feel my brain like flexing right now. All right. <laughs> Yogi brain. Yogi brain. Yogi super brain. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Hi, what's happening? Well, I, am, I got sick and tired of waiting for parts, so I decided to color a little bit. You know, I haven't colored in years, so I'm like, I'll just color, you know, and draw, but you can tell that I'm not really all that good at it. 
Now, actually, what I'm doing here is um, I'm going to make my own gasket. What? Um, it's it's a cellulose fiber gasket, I think, of some type. And I've reached out to the Mercedes dealerships here in Houston, and I've been getting, I wouldn't say the runaround, but they don't know where to find it. I'm, I'm imagining some old troll-looking dude bringing out an old dusty book and slamming it down and dust all coming over and trying to find where this thing comes from and where they can get another one and they haven't been able to find a 30 year old gasket. So, I'm gonna make my own. So I, you uh, just put that paper on there? Yeah, and, and I ran a, you know, the, the what, what do you call that type of technique? But anyway, like a, a, a what do you call that? Uh, you rubbed I, it. I, I, I rubbed it, I, I rubbed all over it. <laughs> and then I'll just uh, make the gasket that size. It's pretty freaking easy, huh? Yeah, I think well, so. Let's do it, man. So this is the gasket stuff that I got. And it came um, from Amazon in a kit. I could have bought just one kind, but I wasn't sure. I knew it wasn't cork. Yeah. Cork is typically the stick stuff that's usually around head gaskets and oil pans. But I knew it was gray or blue and I saw that color in the, the list of things. And this blue one's interesting because this is what's on the oil pan gasket. But according to this, that one there is for water and coolant, whereas this, rubber fiber sheet here is oil coolant and gasoline all right so that's what we'll use and it's a little bit thinner so i think it'll it's going to work really well and all i'm going to do is take this cut it out and then drop it on here and make an outline sweet let's do it let's do it all right I'm gonna make those holes. Looks like something I'd see at a at a, a elementary school. Mercedes, we're gonna get a Mercedes stamp and put it right there. Last OEM one. OEM gasket. I'm not finding these I got these gently from my personal collection. Personal These are not a whole lot. Of, pressure. But, you know, different types of number six Allen keys to get all of these bolts tightened because they're all in different spots and not one single tool can do all the work. So thanks a lot, Mercedes, really appreciate it. I have a high level of confidence that this is gonna work. When are you starting it? Tonight, so quit talking to me. That's what I'm supposed to do. Don't tell me you not talk to you. I was kidding. That's right. You're just kidding. I had to take a picture of that. So I had to follow this diagram to find all of the, um, to trace all the vacuum lines because as you saw in the video, I had a major vacuum leak. And what I found out was there was one of the, the vacuum attachment barbs was open here and um, the gasket was probably bad. So I am getting the last bolts in that I can't reach with the fuel rail on, and I'm gonna torque them down Ugga Dugga style, so. Ugga Dugga? What, what is Ugga Dugga? It, Ugga Dugga is you get your tool on it, and then you, you kind of do an Ugga Dugga, like that, and that's a torque. That's an official torque measurement. Ugga dugga torque. Ugga dugga. So when somebody goes, what did you torque that to? It's like, oh, one ugga dugga. So <laughs> what, what, what's usually it? crank bolts are like four ugga duggas. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> only one ugga dugga here. Perfect timing. Everything's buttoned up, batteries plugged in.
Jesse. Uh, she's still leaking transmission fluid. So I don't think I'm gonna solve that. But she drives. The hood won't close because we messed it up when we pulled the engine out. But I think we can fix that and then it'll be ready. But it drives really well. Bye bye, Project Gunther. That's the only thing I need to do. Oh, let's not blow this out. Michael. Hey, baby, what do you got there? Well, take a look. <gasps> Is that a number two? Yes, take it. I will. Thank you. It's Yogi's Garage, Yogi's Garage second anniversary. That's right. Happy birthday, Yogi's Garage. Happy birthday, Yogi's Garage. Look, wait, make a wish. Oh, yeah. 10,000 subscribers by October 1st. <gasps> See if that happens. But you told everybody. And now it's not going to come true. Maybe right? just 1,000? I'll take 1,000 by October 1st. Okay. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey guys, that's about it. I'm gonna wrap it right there. You can see there's a lot that has to be done in order to put all this back together. And I need to make sure that this crankshaft and the carrier and everything else is in good shape before I start wasting anybody's time and my money. So with that said, this is your first time visiting Yogi's Garage. Thank you for that. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up on your way out. And leave a comment down below. I'd love to engage with my viewers. And oh, by the way, I'm less than 20 subscribers away from hitting the 1,000 subscriber milestone. So please help me out if you haven't done that. As I've said before, once I hit that 1,000 mi milestone, I'm going to be able, it's going to open up a whole lot of opportunities for us. Right, Yogi Mama? Hell yeah. Yeah, that means we don't have to spend as much of our own personal money to get this project off the ground. Because right now, it's all coming out of our bank account. Which I'm fine with, but... If you guys enjoy it and you hit that like and subscribe, man, and YouTube's going to pay me a few little pennies, I'll take what I can get. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check, give it a microphone, I make them make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I could truly be moody, I could have played the fucking Grinch in the movies, I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time, that is not a guy that I would ever want to try to battle rap. Snap, crack a pop, mind fried to a crisp, make an MC into a wide-eyed lunatic. <laughs>